Okay, so our GP100 case crammer is now ready for subscription. Let me go through what it covers. So essentially we've taken 100 key case scenarios from across the GP curriculum, things that might be common, but also some things that might be a bit more rare, but more serious or that you don't want to miss. These are going to help you both prepare for MRCGP exams like the RCA or the MRCGP International OSCE or the induction and refresher simulated consultations assessments, but also to prepare you for your GP rotations and everyday consulting and real life GP practice. So, you know, for each case, we're going to look at the key things that you need to think about and explore with the patient. So things like in, in the data gathering, what are the key questions to ask in the history specific to that case or presentation? What are the red flags that you absolutely mustn't miss? What are the things that you need to think about in terms of examination? And in some cases, they'll actually demonstrate how to do those examinations. In terms of management, what are the key things that are going to help you clinch the diagnosis and separate or narrow down from the differentials? You know, what will separate A from B from C? What are the current guidelines for management? What are the things that you might want to discuss in terms of follow up and safety netting with your patient? In terms of interpersonal, you know, how to have a patient centered approach. What are the key things to think about in terms of communication skills? How to explain things in clear, concise, confident language, certain skills that might be specific to, you know, certain presentations. So, for example, how you might signpost and bring up sensitive topics like in a case where you're discussing sexual health, how you might uh, approach breaking bad news, how you might might approach a patient who's maybe angry or not engaging. Um, what are the key things that are going to help you ultimately be more confident in your consultations day to day and help you pass your exam? So, you know, by the end of these 100 cases, you'll have the key knowledge and skills to help you, you know, do well in a GP rotation, to be confident before you start and during the rotation and to do well in your exams, as well as the videos. And the videos are split into 20 modules, each covering five cases. OK, so for each case, I will discuss the key things to think about in the history, examination, diagnosis and management. But the fifth case in each module is an interactive case. So there's actually a simulator and these were filmed at our last live version of this course. And so you'll see the audience are interacting and asking questions. And I'd like you to think if I had this patient in front of me in clinic or on a telephone consult or on a video consult, what are the key things I would like to ask them? What are the things that I'd like to think about? And then you'll see me discussing the rest of that case. OK. Um, as well as that, there is a 360 page PDF course booklet that you can download and keep that has the teaching slides. Some, some people find it helpful to make notes as they go along. OK, so I'm going to show you now a few clips showing you some of the things that might be covered in data gathering, in management, interpersonal, showing you a, a few clips from some of the interactive cases just to give you a flavor of what it's like. OK, so first case, we're going to look at Parkinson's disease. OK, so in terms of data gathering, Typically, how would they present? It might be that they've noticed tremor or it might be that they've noticed that they're having problems with balance. So they might have actually had a fall and that might be how they come. And then it turns out they've been having some tremor or some balance problems or something like that. Some of the key features that you're going to ask about is have they noticed bradykinesia? I, do they find it difficult to initiate movement? So they want to pick something up and then take some ages to get started. And then they can actually do a similar. They want to get going, take some ages to get going and then they get going. So that's bradykinesia. Then the other key feature is hypokinesia, which is poverty of movement. Another thing to ask is about medication. Now, if they're on prescribed medication, that will be on your list. So you just want to have a look at that and think, are there any drugs that can cause drug-induced Parkinsonism? So they haven't got Parkinson's disease, but maybe they're getting the symptoms because of medication. And this is the list of the common medications that can cause it. In terms of data gathering, some things that you absolutely mustn't miss. You mustn't miss how they're getting on with their activities of daily living. And if someone can't cope and they live on their own, that's an indication to refer them more quickly within two weeks, for example, okay? And then what if they're doing a job where they're operating machinery and for example, they're having trouble with fine movement, they might press the wrong button and then that could be a real safety issue. In terms of examination, things that you're looking for, so that rigidity, so lead pipe or cogwheel rigidity, um, arresting tremor. So ask them to put their hands straight out and then you see, you can put a piece of paper on there and see, you know, if there's a shake, you will see that it's on resting. When they actually go to get something, the tremor tends to improve. Um, ask them to walk to the end of the room and walk back so that you can see that difficulty in initiating movement and that shuffling gait. And then something else that you can do is the pull test, which is a test for postural instability. I'll just show you, David. So the pull test, um, if you stand here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to stand sort of to the side of them. You put 
one hand on one shoulder behind them and the other hand you're going to put here and you tell them, David, I'm just going to try to pull you back. Stop me from pulling you back. Okay. And then what you do is you, you're sort of holding them there and you try and pull. Now, if someone hasn't got Parkinson's, if I did it on any of you, you'll be able to resist. Whereas someone that's got postural instability, when you do the pull test and you sort of pull them back, they'll shuffle back two or three paces. Okay. That's a sign that they might have Parkinson's. Do not start any of the anti-Parkinson's medications in primary care. They need to have seen by neurology, formally diagnosed. They will start the medication. So things like, you know, the methyl dopa and things like that, they'll start it. And then we might do shared care and continue to monitoring it. And explain what is Parkinson's in clear language. So essentially it's a condition that leads to a specific part of the brain getting damaged over time. The main thing it affects is movement, but it can also affect other things like balance, memory, mood. There's no cure for it. But what we can do with medication and with treatment is to delay the speed which it progresses and to treat the actual effects that it has. Okay, so some of the medications, for example, will help with the tremor and, and things like that. Okay, so that's Parkinson's. So we're going to move on to the first interactive case now. Okay, case number five. So you'll see uh, in your handouts, there's just blank spaces here, right? So what I'll do is I'll give you the case background. I will start and then you're going to do the rest of the way. You're going to ask questions. Okay, so this is Tracy Price. She's 55 years old. She had a gallbladder taken out eight years ago. Started on HRT a year ago, no allergies, okay? And she's coming. Hi, Tracy. My name's Dr. Ahmad. How can I help today? I've just got a really bad headache. Where is the headache? Uh, to be honest, it feels like it's all over. Um, I suppose more, a, a bit more to the left and maybe behind my eyes. Okay. Anyone on the live stream like to ask a question? Okay, so I've got one. Um, you seem a bit uncomfortable. Um, can you describe how it's been affecting you? Well, I can't sleep very well. Um, I'm not getting any relief, whatever I try, and it is affecting me at work now. Okay, good. Has this ever happened before? Okay, have you ever had this type of headache before? No, I don't get headaches, um, so no. Okay. You mentioned you've tried something. Mm. Tried. Okay, so what is it that you've tried? You said nothing's worked. Uh, I've tried paracetamol and ibuprofen, um, sort of alternating between the two every couple of hours. Okay, interactive case 70. 50 year old um, diabetic on metformin, allergic to penicillin. How can I help today, Mr. Henry? Right, I want some antibiotics for this sore throat. Don't you even try and fob me off. Okay, <laughs> why do you think antibiotics will, will, will be the right thing for you right now? Because I've got a sore throat, it's really sore. So I hope you'll find this helpful for both GP rotations, but also to help you get through your MRCGP, RCA, or other OSCE-based uh, GP exams, okay? Thank you so much.